So when it's so difficult to trust, how do you end up in a profession? And I don't mean the movies, I mean politics. That is ruthless, where you don't know who to trust. That is such a, can be such a cruel, competitive profession. How does politics happen in your life? I think 2007, when I moved all the cases to, uh, to Supreme Court. And these were the cases because you had spoken about the need for girls to protect themselves if they're having premarital yes, sex. Yes. yes. So I, uh, that's when I told my husband. I said, I think I should, because all these cases are politically motivated. Yeah. I said, if I need to tackle them, if I need to handle them, I think I should get into politics. And he said, not now. Hmm. He's saying, because you have taken the cases to Supreme Court. If you join any political party right now, and when you win the cases tomorrow, it's going to be because you have had a political background, you were able to come out of it. It's your battle, your lone battle. So you win the cases single-handedly. And that's where if people understand, if they see all these five years, what I fought from 2005 to 2010, uh, till I won the cases, yeah. nobody would have ever seen my husband anywhere near me when I was fighting the cases. Whether it was a Supreme Court, whether it was High Court or anywhere in the press meets. Or even when I went to Metur to surrender, mm. because my husband said, it's your battle and you have to come out victorious. You have to handle it. Of course, he was there like a pillar of strength right behind me to support me. But he said, I'm not going to be in the limelight. You have to do it yourself. And then he said, I want you to win these cases and win it single-handedly and then join the political party. Mm. So the thought of joining a political uh, party or to join politics came to me in 2007. But I joined only after I won the cases in 2010. Now, as I said, you have experienced three political parties. Um, obviously, it is your role to defend the party you're presently associated with. So I won't put you on the spot for that uh, and ask you the obvious questions. <laughs> what I want to understand is what was the tipping point that made you leave the Congress? Nothing was happening. The most hypocritical party you can ever come across. Tell me more. Today, it's very surprising when Rahul Gandhi talks about censors and he talks about OBC and ST and everything. But I have literally seen Congress that even a leader like Kamraj is put in a caste bracket. Mm. And they say this is the area which is not about Kamraj's caste. So you do not speak about it's opposite the Kamraj caste and so you do not speak about Kamraj here. This is the area which represents Kamraj's caste. So you speak about Kamraj here. So even when the most tall leader of Tamil Nadu Congress has ever had a leader like Kamraj, one of the most, I would say, worshipped leaders of Tamil Nadu for his simplicity and for his honesty. Because a man like Kamraj, when he died, he just had three pairs of slippers, mm. 174 rupees in his pocket and three sets of veshti and three sets of shirt. That's all he had. Mm. And you, the minute you start putting him in a caste bracket, caste yeah. senses, then it sets you thinking. And I saw them that they're not talking about, they say we are secular, but no, they are not. That's when I first noticed the difference of being a Muslim, being married into a Hindu. Because that's where they started differentiating whether I'm a Muslim or I'm a Hindu. How did they differentiate? That's like saying when you're there, you're, you are going for a campaign. Do not mention that you're a Muslim. The Congress said to Yes. You. Do not mention that you're a Muslim. Or when you're going to a Muslim locality, just speak in Urdu and just keep saying Allah, Allah, Allah. This is where you have to stress that you're a Muslim. So I did not understand that at all. So, uh, you know, the kind of hypocrisy they live with. And it's completely different because when I joined Congress, this was after the decimal of 2014 election. And people said, you're jumping into a sinking ship. Mm. You must be mad. You should be joining BJP. Mm. You joined Congress when the chips were down for the Congress, Absolutely. is what you're saying. Yes, yes. they lost 2000. That's right. They were and wiped I, out in 14. Yes. yes. And I joined them in October. Yes. So, so I was like, but I have been brought up on Congress. I have heard Congress. I have grown up on Indira Gandhi and Rajiv Gandhi. And all my school days, I had Rajiv Gandhi's posters in my rooms. Oh, really? <laughs> so, I mean, that is how I, I was brought up yes. and my entire family was a Congress supporter. So, I literally grew up on Congress. I have seen Sushil Kumar Shindeji when he was, he used to represent Juhu area before he became the minister he was. So, I've literally seen them growing up. So, I thought that was the right ideology and that was the right place for me to be in. Uh, and then what happens? What was your relationship like with no, the Gandhi I had a family? very cordial, I have hardly interacted with Priyanka. 
Okay. So I wouldn't, I, I would reserve my comments about Priyanka because I've hardly interacted with her. Uh, but yes, I would say that I was very fortunate that every time I was in Delhi, I wanted to meet Rahul ji, he would immediately give me an appointment. Or Sonia ji, she would give me an appointment. I would always be, hum I, and I was very humble with their attitude. I wouldn't say they have an air of being the Gandhis or anything, or they have a very hideous attitude, nothing of that, that kind, very, very down to earth people. But when you, you need that kind of a persona to look up to a leader. Hmm. And uh, unfortunately, Rahul Gandhi lacked that. When a leader does not want to be a leader, he does not want to lead from the front, but he wants to be presented as a leader by the workers. And yet you would say that, no, 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 don't push me. But silently you wish that, you know, and you pray that people treat you like a leader. It doesn't work. It's either you have it in you or you don't have it in you. What made you realize that he, like, was there one incident? Was it a series of incidents? There were incidents? many incidents. There were many incidents. Give, a, give us an example of something that really stayed with you and you said, okay, I have to leave. No, I think the kind of insecurities people have in Congress. Mm. A lot of insecurities. I mean, they don't want you to be part of a meeting because you know that you are a good spokesperson, so you will be, uh, you know, you'll be you'll sh outshine, them. outshine them. So I've literally seen that, and uh, it didn't it didn't work for me. I mean, I can't work in an atmosphere where you have, you know, a kind of very infinitely complex people around you. You're not confident of yourself. Uh, you live under a constant fear that you you will be overshadowed or you, you will take over and then it's like a crab story that kind of a crab story I can't work in those was there a tipping point there were a lot of tipping points I wouldn't and I when you eventually said now I'm going yeah the tipping point was then Mr. Rahul Gandhi knows about it are you going to tell us no did they try and stop you I didn't give them an opportunity to you stop were you. sure that you would want to I would go. very sure and what I did is uh, when I gave the letter Within, I think, not even 48 hours, I joined BJP. So I didn't even give them the time. Was it that your own party colleagues in Tamil Nadu, in the Congress, were very hostile to you? Was that part of the reason? Couple of them. And I'm not even into local politics. Yeah. So even now, if you see in BJP, I'm not part of Tamil Nadu politics. I That's don't right. get involved with Tamil Nadu politics. That's right. So I stay out of it. 